there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify It's Q, owner operator of YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today I am talking to you from my MacBook Pro. As the video implies, uh, what I wanted to do with this video was show you a, well, how to get Amiga on your Mac. Now, I know I've made videos like this before with FSUAE and WinUAE but some folks are still having trouble with even those videos I've made. So what I wanted to do was something that I definitely would have appreciated back in the day when I was learning how to do all this, if someone had just made a very simple step-by-step -step walkthrough of the whole process. So while I will be editing you know, my flubs and my, my ums and my uhs and my oohs, I am gonna try and show you everything I'm doing so that there's no, hey, what did he do right there? Why is why is that acting that way? I wanna make sure I cover everything and you get to see the whole process so there's no questions about getting uh, an Amiga up and running on your Mac, okay? And I am using the silicone Mac, silicone? Silicone is this fun little goo you squirt on things to help seal things up. This is a silicon Mac, Apple silicon Mac, M1. It's a 2021 16 inch base model. And what we're going to do is we're going to go, if you look up here, the top of the screen here, we're going to go to fs-uae.net. Uh, I'll put these links in the description below, but you can see right here. Go ahead and download both of these files here. You can see over here it says ARM64. If you don't have a, a, a silicon Mac, then, uh, well, all computers are silicon Q. Okay, anyway, if you don't have an M1 Mac, then yeah, you just download these up here. This is the X8664. Uh, but I'm showing off the uh, ARM64 versions. You download those, they're simply just gonna unpack into your applications folder. And if you go to your applications folder, you'll see them show up here. So you can see FSUAE launcher, FSUAE. And I like to just you know drag it down to the toolbar down here. Okay, now, one of the things I am not gonna show you is how to acquire anything illegally. But what I'm gonna show you <laughs> is, let's, let's do this, watch. How do I get Amiga ROMs and ADF files, the Amiga disk form, you know, the virtual disk formats that I can use to, with an emulator so I can install Workbench or play games. So let me just do this, the, you know, the totally manual way. Google, Google's your friend, or you can use DuckDuckGo if you're not a, a Google fan, or you can use AltaVista if you're uh, my grandfather. And then just type in uh, basically uh, Hyperion Amiga. Look at that. Boom, all right. That's amazing, isn't it? Click on here, and then you can buy uh, the operating system. And this will give you not only the latest version of the operating system, and as you can see down here, there's a hotfix, 3.2.2.1, okay? And uh, that's how you can get the uh, latest version of the operating system and the ROMs for it. However, if you don't want to do that, there's another way you can do this. We'll go back to Google here. We'll type in Clo Anto Amiga. If you don't want to use the Hyperion 3.2.2 ROMs, the, the latest uh, version of the uh, Amiga operating system, you wanna go totally retro old school. This is what Amiga Forever is for. Amiga Forever is more than just getting Amiga Workbench and ROMs though. This is a complete package system. It's, it does, it, it's like it does it all. This is actually its own emulator setup, its own, um, you know, kind of like all-in-one system to just run Amiga on a Windows PC. Sadly, they still only support Windows PCs. They did mention that they might support Mac one day, and then they just never really did it. So FSUAE is really your only truly good option on Mac. There are internet or web-based Amiga emulators that are not terrible, but if you want to have actual performance and whatnot, use the FSUE on your Mac. But this is another way you can get those Amiga ROM files. Like if you want the old school 1.0, uh, 2.0, 3.0, you can go to Amiga Forever here, up here, and you can purchase this fairly cheaply and just get the ROMs and the uh, workbench files, the disk files to install the operating system completely legally. You don't have to you know, break any laws and get arrested. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. Okay, so enough talk about that and how to get the stuff. Uh, no, I'm not going to send you the files. They're cheap, folks. Okay, they're cheap. If you're if you have a Mac, you already have enough money to, to buy that stuff. So please don't don't ask me for that stuff. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and launch FSUEE, 
and it'll pop up just like this. Now, you see I've got some configuration settings here, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, Q, you said you're gonna show me how to do all of this from scratch. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is let FSUE know where those ROM files are at. So you're gonna click on the little Amiga check mark here and go import kickstarts. Import kickstart and ROM files? Yes. That Amiga Forever I mentioned earlier, if you bought the CD version of that software, you'll get an image file you can download, okay? Nobody, I mean, they'll ship you a disc. They will actually ship you a CD, DVD, but you can also just download the ISO file. You can pick that ISO file from here and you can import it and it'll import all the kickstarts that are available from Amiga Forever. That's pretty slick. Now, if you look down here, it says available kickstart versions. See these green check marks? Obviously, I've already done this. So yeah, I have all the things right here. It knows I have all the things. So what you would do is click browse and then you would go to your folder where you keep your, your ROMs. In my case, I kind of created a temporary um, Amiga folder here called Amiga and then OS and then I got a ROMs. You pick this, you click OK, all right? It's gonna scan, 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 and then you'll get all these little happy little green check marks down here. That's if you've acquired your ROMs, you know, legally. If you download ROMs from some random website or whatever, I have no idea what's gonna happen, all right? There's so many different versions of these ROMs you could have downloaded something that requires an unlocked file, meaning that the ROM isn't readable until it gets unlocked by something. I mean, who knows? If you get them legally, they'll just show up right here. So now we are to the phase where let's, let's build an Amiga. Let's build a virtual Amiga on our Mac here. What we're gonna do is the easiest thing to do is up here where it says, this little pull down, it says Amiga model. We're gonna go with a 1200. And what that will do is it's gonna default some presets. It's picking the 3.1 ROM, which is fine. However, you can see I've got a bunch of different ROM options here. I'm gonna go ahead, You, if you've gotten your ROMs, remember, remember when we did this little import kickstarts, okay? It says the Amiga 1200. So you should have the ROM. If you did not have the ROM, it wouldn't even show this, okay? It, it would ask you, you need ROM files. So the only reason you're seeing this 3.1 here is because it found it when we did the import. So you're already good to go. If you don't see anything here, Okay, if you don't see anything here, then yes, you've done something horribly wrong and it doesn't see your ROM files and you need to get those imported. But we're gonna go uh, right here, it says 3.1. However, however, what we're gonna do here is we're not gonna do 3.1, we're gonna do 3.2. Well, Q, you're, you're killing me. I just bought Amiga Forever and it has 3.1. Why do I have to go to Hyperion and get 3.2? You don't. Everything I'm about to show you is gonna work the same exact way. If you've got Amiga Forever and you've got your 3.1 ROM, just pretend it's 3.1 instead of 3.2, the Hyperion ROM. So you go over here to ROM and RAM, see how it says ROM and RAM, Kickstart ROM, custom. This already says Kick A4000. So already what, what FSUE is, what you're telling FSUE is over here back in the home screen, even though you picked Amiga model A1200, 3.1 ROM, you are overriding that ROM selection by using this feature. So right now, you are overriding the ROM feature. It's not gonna use 3.1. It's gonna actually gonna be using this kick A3000.ROM. But guess what? We're gonna change that. Let's click here. Okay, so there we go. We've got the A1247.1.1.1.ROM. That's the 3.2.2 ROM, all right? Sweet, that's so cool. So remember, this is going to override this preset of a1200 3.1 ROM. It won't be using the 3.1 ROM. That's why you don't even see it here, okay? This overrides that ROM selection. You can also override a bunch of other stuff. So you can change the chip RAM on the Amiga, the slow, the fast. You can add some Zoro 3 fast memory. As you can see, I've already clicked that. I've added 64 megabytes. Motherboard RAM, 16 megabytes. You don't even need that. So Q, wait a minute. Let's read that. Let's, let's slow down, Q. What do you mean? Let's uncheck all this stuff. So again, home screen. Amiga model, pick a model, boom, 1200. It'll pick a 3.1 ROM, it's set your emulation up. You now have an Amiga 1200 with 3.1 ready to boot. Give it a floppy disk and it'll boot up and you can, you can boot into Workbench, you can boot into a video game, okay? But what I'm trying to show you is how you can you can configure this your own way and, and get everything in, you know installed and it'll kind of get into it more deeper. So we're overriding the ROM selection by picking this Kickstart ROM, okay? We, I just chose you know, the 3.2.2 ROM. You can come down here and you can basically alter the stock configuration of the 1200. You can alter the chip memory. You can 
go up to eight, go down to 256. There's all kinds of fun stuff you can do here. You can add the fast RAM, the motherboard RAM, the Zoro 3, accelerator RAM, graphics card, RAM. yeah, RTG. You wanna have a Picasso 4 in your 1200? You can do it with this, it's an emulator. What I'm gonna do though, the only thing I'm gonna do is just add some Zoro 3 fast memory. We're gonna click that. We're gonna add, I don't know, a comfortable 64 megabytes, all right? So what that is, that's nice, fast, like CPU direct memory for the emulator. We don't really need any of this other stuff. I'm fine with the stock two megs of chip memory, of course, that's what the Amiga's gonna use. And then over here, you get the joystick you know, area where you can you know, pick that stuff. But guess what? It's, it's, it's automatically just gonna pick your mouse and your keyboard on your laptop if that's what you're using, or it'll pick the mouse and the, uh, the, mouse and the keyboard on your desktop Mac if that's what you're using. If you have a joystick plugged in before you launch this, if you plug your joystick in, your Mac, and it's recognized by the Mac system, and then you launch this, it should find it. And if not, you can easily uh, click the buttons and, and get it activated. Over here is more fun stuff. This is the expansions, right? Accelerator board, all that good stuff. Not gonna go over this stuff because again, I'm trying to show you the basic way to just get this emulator working and running and loading your Amiga on your Mac. There's so much fun stuff in here. See all this stuff is turned down here? This is from an old profile. I'm gonna uncheck all of it. All of it's gonna go away. Now, CD drive, by the way, here's your CD drive. Here's your floppies, this is where we had our floppies. This stuff is really self-explanatory, but again, if you're watching and you're trying to follow along, look, here's, I've got these things already set up. Yeah, we'll, we'll, go, ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and just eject all this stuff so we don't cheat. But I'm just trying to show you like how, how the process works. In fact, this shouldn't even be turned on. What is UAE BS? socket.library. This basically allows your Amiga emulator to share your computer's LAN card, your internet, your networking card, so you can have uh, easy internet on your Amiga. It's kind of a cheater way to do it. So now that we're back to the normal settings, if I lost you and you thought I was just gonna follow along and install FSUEE and get a Amiga running on my Mac, I apologize. I'm trying to go over everything, but you can always skip forward, skip back. So I've unchecked all the stuff that was turned on. Again, remember back here in home screen when you pick 1200 and it, it set the defaults? Just like the ROM, how we overrode the ROM, you can override all of this stuff too. You can override the sound, the networking, accelerators. You can go crazy with this stuff. You can override you know, the CPU. You can, hey, you want your Amiga 1200 to have a uh, 68060? Sure, you can do it. Now, I'm not gonna do that for this purpose. What I am going to do though, and I suggest that you, you probably should do this too. See where it says floppy drive speed? Click that. Set this to turbo, okay? You might wanna just do 800. Eh, sometimes that can be weird, so just do turbo. It's, it's faster, it's, it's faster. It's just gonna speed up the floppy drive, the virtual floppy drive. If you've done that, you're like, okay Q, so what have we done? We've scanned in the, we've, we've come over here, we've imported the kickstarts, or we've imported Amiga Forever. We've imported the, the, the additional kickstart of 3.2.2 from Hyperion. Uh, why doesn't it show up here? Because this is only looking at a certain set of uh, pre predetermined kickstarts. So that's where we come over here with a little, little dip chip looking icon. And we went and loaded up that custom kickstart from Hyperion, the 3.2.2, right? Okay, there you go. Or whatever custom kickstart you might want. If you don't want a custom kickstart, like I said, if you've got, if you did the Amiga Forever import, you don't need, you don't need to mess with this little dip chip thing here. You're, you're good to go. You got your, you got your 3.1 ROM and you're, it'll just boot up the Amiga into a 3.1. Uh, you know, you'll need Workbench installed or have a, a game disc, but yeah. But we're just doing this so that you can have access to the latest version of the Amiga operating system. And then we covered the joysticks, the inputs, the defaults are fine, you don't need to mess with it. And then yeah, I you know, kind of went over, here's all the cool upgrades and options you can do to your 1200. This stuff costs thousands of dollars on eBay. You can just click a button here and get it for free. Again, more upgrades to your Amiga costs thousands and thousands of dollars on eBay. You can get it right here for free. Isn't that nice? Okay, so we've done that. Well, how do we get uh, floppies in this thing? Well, there's a little weird quirk to this. You see floppy drives here and you're like, oh, I get it, there's four floppy drives, DF0 through four, okay. Click the floppy, click the floppy, click the floppy, click the floppy. You couldn't do that, but it's you want, You need to preload the floppies. And what I mean by that is, see this media swap list down here? The problem is, as far as I know, because I'm not an expert, whatever floppies you boot with in FSUAE, you're stuck with. In WinUAE, you can hot swap floppies like a real Amiga 
and they it, it'll it'll update. It'll it'll actually let you put in new floppies and eject floppies, and it happens in just like you'd expect a real Amiga to do or any kind of computer. FSUEE for some reason, at least this, unless somebody you know in the comment will leave a comment and say I'm wrong. Uh, if you put floppies in here, you're stuck with these floppies. You can eject them, but you can't insert new ones. You have to like quit the emulator and go find the floppy and put it in. So you, you basically kind of like a GoTech drive. If you're familiar with GoTech, you can Google that. You know, Google GoTech Amiga drive. You you kind of need to fill up the, the the USB thumb drive on the GoTech here, which is the media swap list. You got to use. You got to basically put all the floppies that you think you're going to need here in this media swap list. And I'll show you why later. So we're gonna go here, go to downloads, go to Amiga, go to OS, and we're gonna click on 3.2, and we're just gonna shift click all these things. This is this is everything that 3.2 is, okay? Click that, boom. So now all those files are in there. All these 3.2 files, look at that. So we're not actually putting a floppy in yet. So we've got all these floppies here. We'll go ahead and we'll call, we'll save this. So go over here. Now remember, yours is not going to have any of this here. You're not going to see any of this in yours. So you're going to go down here and you're going to call this, uh, you know, I'll call this Amiga test. And then you click this little red button here and that saves it. Boom, Amiga test. So we'll go up here. And one of the first things we need to do, because if we try to boot this right now, watch what's going to happen. Option, Zoro 3 memory needs a CPU with 32-bit process address sync. Okay, so... We can't use Zoro 3 fast memory because I am not using an upgraded CPU. I am using the stock configuration Amiga 1200. So it's a 68 EC020. So I'm not able to use that Zoro memory. You saw that error that uh, FSUE spat up there at the bottom. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a problem. So what we're gonna need to do, I really do wanna use this memory just to keep things uh, zippy and fast. So we are going to go ahead, and this way I can show you an additional feature in FSUE. We're going to modify the CPU in this 1200. So we're going to click it. Isn't this great? This would cost you like so much money and hassle. We're simply going to go down here, and we're going to make this a 68030, okay? A regular Motorola 68030. Boom. We just gave ourselves an upgrade, and now our amazing Zoro 3 memory should now work. So we'll go ahead and click Start, and again, Back to floppies. I don't have any floppies inserted. I have this list here, this like USB GoTech list down here, but I don't actually have any floppies inserted. So what's going to happen when we click start? So there you go. We got the 3.2 kickstart, 3.2 ROM, sorry, with a 47.1111. We picked that earlier. That's what you're going to see. Okay, that's what you're going to see. Well, Q, what the heck? What do we do now? Well, I'm going to tell you a couple of neat little things. Left command A changes the aspect ratio. So there we go, that looks a little better. Left command F goes to full screen mode. Left command Q quits the emulator. So those are your hotkeys for this program. Left command A changes the aspect ratio. Left command F goes between full screen. Left command Q quits. So just remember that. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press function F12 and you see this thing pop up. This kind of like almost retro 8-bit looking thing pop up. This is where you can do some hardware level Amiga stuff like pause, load and save state, reset the Amiga, mess with the keyboard inputs, and then look down here, removable media, DF0. Yeah, it is empty. Yeah, it is empty because we left it empty. Hit return and look at this. Remember all the, that media swap list where we kind of like preloaded all the disks? Here you go. They're all in here, okay, including a, a save disk, but they're all in here. So we're going to go down to the install disk. Watch what's gonna happen when we, when we do this. So yeah, you're gonna hear the crazy turbo floppy going. Now, what are you gonna see here on the, on, the, on the workbench here? Install disk, RAM disk. Huh, where's, where's, where's DH0 question mark? Well, guess what? We don't have a hard drive, because we didn't make one. But I wanted to show you the full process. So this is what happens. You don't have a hard drive, there's nothing you can do. Now you could put it in the workbench disk and just boot workbench from floppy if you want to do that, or you can put it in a game, sure. So now we're going to do left command Q to quit. So how do we get a hard drive in here? I see this little icon that looks like a hard drive. It says hard drive. You can, what does this say? This says browse for file. Okay, browse for a hard drive file or browse for a folder. So you can have like a directory as a virtual hard drive. What we're gonna do, and what I like to do, 
is I like to use hard files, okay, AD, you know, HDF files or .img files because that keeps it all happy and tidy in one easy, you know, file that you can copy from computer to computer without messing with the Amiga files that are tucked away neat inside it, okay? So how do you create one of these? Well, then you gotta go back to this Amiga check mark over here. You're gonna click it, and down here where it says HDF creator, that's how you create a hard drive. So we're gonna create this hard drive file. We're gonna call it dh0.adf. We're gonna make it 900 megabytes, and it's gonna to go to users, Q, documents, FS, UEE, hard drives. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You can put it wherever you want. You can click browse and make it where, I'm just gonna let it go there. Just remember where, you, where it went so you don't forget. You can create. So there it goes, disk image created. You can just go ahead and click close. Now you're gonna go here and click the browse for file. And do you remember where it went? It went into documents, FSUAE, hard drives, Amiga. So we're gonna double click that. Boom, there it is. Now we have a hard drive. I showed you what happened last time we booted. We booted right to the uh, kickstart screen because I didn't have a floppy inserted. And then I showed you that pressing function F12 brought up that screen that allowed you to pick floppies. But I'm gonna go ahead, just to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna pick the install floppy from here so that we can just get, get scooting, get installing. So boom, install. So now when we click start, it's gonna go ahead and just boot right up into that install floppy. So again, left command F for full screen. Turbo floppy. And then left Amiga A for aspect ratio correction. There you go. So now look at that, DH0 uninitialized. Yay, look how easy that was. Click on it. We're gonna go up here, we're gonna format disk. Gonna go ahead and call, what do we call this? What, workbench, probably? Yeah, you can call it DH0, but I'll call it workbench, because I'm, I'm old fashioned. And then we'll do a uh, fast file system, long file names, quick format, always quick format. Boom, done, okay. So now install, and just go ahead and click install there, and you guys have done this 100 billion times. Installing Workbench, it's so exciting. Okay, so because we're using FSUE and we're doing the uh, single floppy disk here, we're gonna have to go ahead and use that uh, media swap list to get to the next disk, so that's function F12. That'll bring up our little interface here. You go down and you just go install 3.2 you know, ADF, click enter, and now you can go pick the file that it's asking for. It's asking for Workbench, so that's what we're gonna do. Click it, or highlight it, and then you know, hit the return key, enter key, and there you go. Again, function F12. Now, if you have your Mac set to use the function keys as function keys, you don't have to press the function button like I'm doing, function F12. But I'm just, that's what I have to do, that's why I keep saying that. So now it wants disk doctor, We'll go ahead and use the arrow keys to go up to Disk Doctor, and there we go. I'm not gonna show you this whole process because you've seen this a billion times, but I did wanna get you familiar with the hotkeys to use to access the different uh, you know, menus for FSUEE. All of this stuff is basically saying, oh, you have a 68030 CPU, or a 68040, or a 68060. You're gonna need some special library files in order to use that accelerator properly. Now, if this was actually truly a stock 1200 with its 68EC020, you wouldn't have seen this. But because we did do that little like uh, free upgrade to the 68030 for our 1200, so we could use that awesome Zoro 3 memory, we are seeing this. So you're gonna have to install these MMU libs that it's talking about. So you click proceed and it says, hey, you're all done. Yay, but you're not done. You're not done at all. So what you need to do is double click the installer again. Hey, look, it's asking for it. So now we gotta go ahead and put that back in the disk drive. Install. And we're gonna click proceed, and we're gonna say install CPU support libraries. Boom. Is this where you wanna put them? Yes. Now it's gonna ask for that actual support libraries disk. So let's go ahead and grab it, MUI libs. Tell it what it is. Is it a GDP? Is it this? Is it that? Eh, it's other. Okay. So now it's like, hey, uh, remove all the disks. So again, function F12, go up here where it says uh, removable media, click the MUI libs, click eject. 
and then click proceed. So guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna reboot. And there you go. You now have Amiga OS 3.2 installed on your virtual Amiga that did not cost you thousands of dollars. Go ahead and get rid of that backdrop. Go over here, let's go to prefs. Pick a screen mode that's not terrible. This is pretty horrible. So we'll do high res lace. We'll give it, uh, I don't know, let's give it 64 colors. Click save. Like a dangerous person, look at that. Oh, there we go. See, look how much better that is. And nice and quick because it's an emulator. And again, you know, this is on a Silicon Mac, an M1 Mac, an ARM Mac. This is the ARM emulator for FSUEE. Is it as fast as the uh, you know x86 FSUEE emulator for Mac? No, it's not, but it's darn fast enough. It's plenty fast for Amiga emulation and awesome Amiga fun. So I hope this helped you understand how this all works. Now again, left command Q to quit. And then what we're gonna do, because we did all this, you can click save, right? You wanna make sure you click save so you don't lose any of the stuff you've done here, like well, hard drive and, and you know, we did the custom ROM and then we went over here and we changed the CPU to a 6830. Make sure you click the little red button and save, okay? Because if you don't save, it's gonna all be gone and you're gonna be very fussy. However, before you click save, eject the floppy. Also, you probably wanna get rid of all this media swap list stuff, right? You don't want this junking up the menu if you're not gonna use it. So you click the little broom button here, sweep, gets rid of it, go over here, click save. Now it's saved. So there's no floppies here. There's just your Amiga HDF file and all the other stuff we did here. You're good to go. So if you go ahead and you hit, you know, quit, and you're like, okay, I want to do this again. You come down here, you launch it. Amiga test, you double click it. Boom. What are we going to do? Left command F for full screen. Then left command A, A for aspect ratio correction. And there you go. You're back into your Amiga. You got your 64 megs of Zorro 3 fast memory, your two megs of chip, 3.2. Now again, 3.2.2.1 is the most current version of Amiga OS when this video was made. You get that through Hyperion. You don't get that through Amiga Forever. Amiga Forever has, uh, I guess, the license to make Amiga ROMs and workbenches up to the original classics, as you call it, like 3.1, up to 3.1 whereas Hyperion is able to move forward and develop these newer versions of Amiga operating system. So it's cool that we've got a couple people making stuff. That's always fun. So yeah, there it is. I hope this uh, made this more clear. I know this is a long video and I kind of rambled and jumped around, but the whole point is from this video, you could clearly see how I actually did all the steps and how I got everything imported and you know all the little hoops I went through to get things to happen. And I hope that makes it uh, a little easier for you Mac guys out there trying to get Amigas on your Mac because Amigas are better than Macs. Okay, I'm done with this video.